And change is a dirty word. Uh, we, we change the way we set up the chairs and some of you hyperventilate. <laughs> uh, change is something that we don't really understand uh, a lot of times. I mean, uh, it is a dirty word, especially if it involves a diaper, right? I mean, if you have to change a diaper, then this, this is really, really when it becomes a dirty word. Uh, change does cause a lot of problems. I mean, we get, we get set in our routines. We have things that we know that, that this is the way life should be. And then when something happens and when there's a change, there's this, oh no, what's going on? Change can be a dirty word. But change can also be a refreshing word. You know, you change the sheets on your bed. You get that smell and it's fresh. You change your clothes, you know, you're out working, you go take a shower and you come in and you put on the nice comfy clothes for the evening and so you've changed clothes. Or, uh, so change can mean refreshing. I mean, how many times have we said and how many times have we thought, man, I sure could use a change of scenery. Change is inevitable. Whether we like change or don't like change or adjust to change or don't adjust to change, change happens. Change happens all the time. And in order for us to grow, in order for us to mature, in order for us to be better than we are, in order for us to be different, we have to change. It is at the heart of the Christian life. Because the Christian life is not natural. The Christian, the Christian life is not normal. And without God's help, honestly, the Christian life is not even possible. And so in order for me to live the way that God wants me to live and do the kinds of things that God wants me to do and stop the kind of things that God wants me to stop doing, I have to change. I have to mature. I have to be willing to do things differently. And so that's a big reason why we come to church. I mean, we come to church for lots of reasons, for friendships and for community, to be challenged, to be comforted, but a big part of it is to change. And when we go to the scriptures, and, and the scriptures have a long history and all kinds of things to talk about the Bible. And I said this last week, and I'll continue to say this. Uh, if you read the Bible, you're going to have questions. And that's why I know most of you don't ever read the Bible. Because you don't ever have any questions. So you don't have any questions, I know you're not reading it. Because if you start reading this, you're going to have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of questions. We read it, we want to live it because we think that it tells us, or our belief is in the fact that we will be better people if we do it. And, and we're in a series where we're looking at a power chapter. And I, I call, I think that the, the scriptures have several power chapters in them. Uh, chapters like Psalms 23, Psalms 51, Romans 12, John chapter 3. These are all power chapters. And one of those power chapters is Colossians 3. And so we're in the middle of a series where we're looking at Colossians 3. And the, the guys in the band and, uh, read the scripture that we taught from last week. And what we taught from last week, we looked at a couple of different things. We looked at that, that what Colossians teaches us is that there's a new life. And that when I am raised to a new life in Christ, when I give my life to Him and I say, okay, God, you, you are God and I am not and I'm giving you my junk and I exchange hearts with you and all those different kind of phrases that, we, that I get a new identity, that I get a new life. Not only do I get a new life, I get a new way of thinking. Because Colossians tells us that we're supposed to think of the things of heaven, not just the things of earth. So I have a new life, I have a new way of thinking. I get a new revelation. When I'm walking with God, when I am understanding God, when I'm reading in the scriptures and I get more questions than I, than I have uh, when I started reading it, things start being revealed to me. And, and I, I get more and more understanding about God. And then the fourth thing that we talked about was habits. And in this, in this, in this passage, of, for especially the first part of Colossians, Paul goes through a list. He goes through a list of things that we're supposed to get rid of. And we talked about that last week. And today what we're going to talk about is the things that we're supposed to put on instead of the things that we're supposed to get rid of. Now habits are like this, and you all have it, so we all have habits. If you're going to change a habit, you can't just stop something. You have to replace it. Here's, here's a basic principle when it comes to habits. It's this. Bad habits reappear if not replaced with good habits. So if I just stop something... It's, it's not going to work. 
I've got to replace that with something. I've got to exchange that with something. And we see that in Colossians 3. We see how what we read earlier where, where it says to get rid of all of these things. Get rid of malice and get rid of greed and get rid of sexual immorality. Get rid of these things. And then today, Scripture is talking about some things that we're supposed to put on. And this is Colossians chapter 3, starting in verse 11 or 12 or somewhere around there. Since God chose you to be the holy people He loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. And you see why Colossians 3 is a power chapter, right? I mean, those just are four or five verses, and they're just slammed with all kinds of things uh, for us to be thinking about and talking about this morning. I don't know if you picked up on it, but there's a theme in it, and the, the theme in there is to clothe yourself. Did you pick up on that? He's talking about get rid of, and he's talking about putting on. He's talking about clothe yourself. So he, Paul here is using this. He's writing this. He's using a very common thing in our lives, and that is the putting on and the taking off of clothes, something that we do every day. We get dressed and undressed every day. Some of us do that more than, you know, more than once or twice or three times. Some of us, you know, don't. But, but we know what, it like, what it's like to do that. And so what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to go through uh, the scriptures and talk about uh, seven things that we need to be. Because at the very, the very heart of this is that we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be different. If we're followers of Jesus, if we're Christians, we're supposed to be different. We're not supposed to be like everybody else. And I didn't think that you wanted me to change clothes today. So I said, like, that's not a good idea. It would be very memorable, but it's not a good idea. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to use hats. So we're going to talk about not, not the phrase wearing, uh, wearing a, different, a bunch of different hats. So although that is true, because when we read the scripture there, there's a lot of stuff to do there, right? Did y'all pick up on that? There's a lot of stuff to do there. So there are a lot of hats that we have to wear. So we're going to do that. The first one, if you're taking notes, is this. Is we need to be amazing. Don't you need to be amazing? You need to be Amazing. How many of you, don't, don't raise your hands, but how many of you think that you are amazing? <laughs> just like you wake up every morning and go, man, I am just amazing. <laughs> I, am ama- I am married to an amazing woman. I got amazing kids. I live in an amazing house. I drive an amazing car. I'm amazing. My life is amazing. But we need to be amazing. And this is what I mean by this. And here's here's, the, here's what he says, verse 12. Since God chose you to be holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself, did you get that clothing? Okay. With tender-hearted mercy. Tender-hearted mercy. Now mercy means giving someone something they don't deserve. So if I'm going to clothe myself with tender-hearted mercy, then, yes, I got to be giving people stuff that I don't that they don't deserve. He he goes on to say, kindness. Kindness. Be kind. Humility. Gentleness. How gentle are you? Anybody ever wear a bandana? I wear a bandana. I wear a bandana almost every day. It's because I'm, a, I'm really a thug at heart. <laughs> I, I do wear a bandana every day, but I don't wear it because I'm in a motorcycle gang. In fact, one time when I was driving around town with my daughter, who was six at the time, pulled up side next to a motorcycle, and I said, Madison, I think I'm going to get a motorcycle. And she looked at me and says, Dad, you're not the man for that. 
But I do wear a bandana, and when I wear a bandana, I wear a bandana when I work out. Todd and Mitzi go to the place where I work out, you'll see me wear my bandana. And the reason I wear my bandana is not to be cool, obviously. Um, <laughs> and it's not to keep the hair out of my eyes. It's to keep the sweat off my face. It's to keep the sweat from it, because I'm a sweater. When I work out, I'm a sweater. And so that's why I wear the bandana. And when I look at this, to clothe myself with tenderhearted mercy, that means I've got to give people stuff they don't deserve. And most of us are Republicans. We have a really hard problem with this. <laughs> I mean, this is a difficult thing to do, to give people stuff that they don't deserve. Kindness, humility, gentleness, gentleness. Especially at home. We're not very gentle at home. Do you realize that if you spoke at work the way you spoke at home, you'd get fired? Do you realize if you spoke at work the way you spoke at home, with the same volume and the same attitude, you would get fired? Being gentle, man, it's difficult. And patience? Are you kidding me? I'm supposed to be patient? And this is just one verse? All of these things, this cause, causes a lot and a lot of work. And when you work, you sweat. So you've got to have something to keep the, the sweat out of your eyes. So when I realize when I have to work on this, I've got, to put, I've got to put something on. I've got to keep the sweat out of my eyes. But here's the deal. If I spend my day, and you spend your day with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, would you not be amazing? Would you not be amazing? If you had somebody in your life, if your best friend was all of those things, they would be amazing. If you could get your kids to act like that for two hours, that would be amazing, right? And so we need to be amazing. That's part of what we need to do. Not only do we need to be amazing, we need to be aware. We need to be aware. This is what the next verse says. The next word says this, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Oh my gosh. I thought the other verse was hard. That's just getting harder. Now I've got to put up with your stuff. <laughs> I've got to put up with your junk. I've got, I got, I got to understand that you've got problems. <laughs> I've got problems. And we have to forgive anyone who offends you. Wow. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Now, this is my playing golf hat. And I don't play golf hat very much, but this is my playing golf hat. It's also my hiking hat. It's basically my hat I wear anytime I'm outside more than three minutes. <laughs> because this is the hat that I wear to keep the sun off my head. So I have to be aware that if I'm in the sun very long, I'm going to get sunburned. And so this is my be aware hat. I'm aware that the sun is intense. I'm aware that it can burn me. So I put this hat on to protect me from the sun. And if I go in and I understand this and I start remembering these things and I start applying this to my life, I have to understand, listen, there's a pretty good chance something's going to happen this next week where somebody's going to offend me. Somebody's not going to come through Somebody's going to say something. Somebody's not going to... I mean, something's going to happen in some way or another where I'm offended. Or someone's going to do something to me that's, that's, that's going to go against what I want them to do. And you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to offend people. I, I'm, I'm going to be short with someone. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be gentle. I'm not going to be patient. I'm not going to do that in every situation. And the same thing is going to be true in your life. And when you have that, we have to be aware that this is going to happen. There's a lot of times we go into relationships and we go into different things and we think it's going to be perfect. No. There's not going to be, it's not going to be perfect. If you come to church here for more than three weeks in a row, probably going to, something's going to make you a little uncomfortable. You may get a little offended. And we have to understand that. We, we have to understand that this is a part of life. So what's Paul saying? He's saying make allowance for. Be prepared for it. 
If I go to play golf without this hat, do you know what I have to do? I have to buy another hat. Right? Okay. I always think Southern California is warm like here. And so every time I go to Southern California, I tend to forget to take something warm. So I've got like eight Laguna Beach hoodies. <laughs> because every time I go there, it's like it's freezing here. I need a hoodie. But I, so I didn't make allowance for it. And we have to make allowance that people are going to offend us. So I need to be amazing. I need to be aware. And then, then the next verse is this. Be love. Be love. He goes on to say, Above all, close yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Now Paul's not finished. He kind of puts this in the middle. Okay, so he's just given two real, he's given a lot of things there. Be patient, gentle, and, and kind, and all of this, and, and give allowances for when people offend you. Above, but above all, put on love. And so right now, I'm wearing my favorite hat of all, which is no hat. I don't like wearing hats. I'd prefer not to wear a hat. That's why I love when I'm in a situation where I don't have to wear a hat. So be Love, above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. So what's going to bind us in perfect harmony? Love. love. Not everybody behaving the correct way. Because that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're going to have a bad day. I'm going to have a, a bad day. One of, the, one, of the, one of the rules for planting a church is they say that you need two people to plant the church. Because if you plant a church by yourself, you're going to have bad days. And when you have bad days, you need to have somebody close who's having a good day. And that's why we need partners in general, right? That's why we need friends in general. Because we're just not all at the same place at the same time. So I've got to be amazing. And I need to be aware. And I also need to be loved. And the, 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 the next one is this. I need to be ruled. I need to be ruled. Now, ruled, what do you mean? Ruled. And why are you wearing a baseball hat? Well, the reason I'm wearing a baseball hat is, one, I mentioned I don't really like hats, and I rarely ever wear a baseball hat. And if I wear this hat, and I like hats. I like, my, my father collects hats, and, and I, I've got some of them, but I don't like to wear them. If I wear this baseball hat for more than about 30 minutes, you know what I get? I get a headache. I get a headache. So I... I I, if I have to wear this, it gives me a headache, and it doesn't keep my ears from getting burned, which is no good, right? And so, and I, haven't, I don't need to be a redneck, so the, the, none of that, so that's why I like my blue hat. But the reason I, I, I'm wearing a baseball hat, and I know some of you love baseball hats. Some of you are like, ah. the only time you're not wearing a baseball hat is when you're at church, but I understand that. But for me, this is what it represents, is because it gives me a headache, and I don't really like to wear it. It's a, it's a, a, this kind of hat bothers me, Okay? So to be ruled, if I'm going to be ruled by something, that bothers me. Probably bothers you too. But here's what, here's what Paul says that we should be ruled by. Verse 15. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Another really powerful verse, right? I know it's the reason it's a power chapter is because it's filled with power verses. And this verse is powerful. Let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. Now, I'm supposed to have peace ruling my heart. And where does this peace come from? I'm supposed to have peace that's ruling my heart. Where does this peace come from? Christ. It doesn't come from me. You can't give me peace. Okay? Another person can't give you peace. So stop looking for that person to give you peace. They can't do it. I can't do it. My circumstances are, is not going to give me peace. You got problems here? And you think moving's going to solve your problems? No. You just pack them in a box and take them with you. The only place that I'm going to get peace is from Him. And I have to let His peace rule me. It comes from Him and it has to rule in my heart. It just can't breeze in and breeze out. In other words, I can't just be thinking about the peace that comes from Christ on Sunday mornings. I have to do it on Tuesday. 
I have to do it on Wednesday. I have to do it on Thursday. I have to live the truth of Jesus in everyday life. For as members of one body, you're called to live in peace and always be thankful. I should be ruled by peace, the peace that comes from him. I need to be ruled by a thankful heart and not just in November. I need to be ruled by a, a thankful heart all the time. So not only am I supposed to be amazing and be aware and be loved and be ruled, I also need to be teachable. How teachable are you? Now this is my World War II Russian hat. Both of my, I have to do, this is a little difficult to do with the microphone. Like this. You have to be teachable. Now, boy, do I hate wearing this. <laughs> I can't hear. I can barely see. But on a cold, windy lacrosse day, in January when I'm watching my daughter play lacrosse, guess what hat I'm wearing? <laughs> this one. You know why? Because I hate being cold. And I went to a lacrosse game once in January. And I said, look, the wind's not even blowing at our house. But you walk onto a lacrosse field or a soccer field in January, and guess what? The wind is always blowing. And it's freezing. And my dad has this saying, uh, you should take the coat with you because you can't put it on if you don't have it. Right? Uh, my daughter and wife packing to go to Zion this weekend. Well, should we pack a coat? You know what I said? Can't put it on if you don't have it. That was my, <laughs> that's what I was saying. All right? Now, if you don't need it, you don't need it. We need to be teachable. And listen to what he says. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Now, again, where does the wisdom come from? It comes from him. It comes from understanding. It comes from those things. And what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to teach and counsel each other. Do you know there's times that you need to be the teacher? And then there's times you need to be teached. Taught. <laughs> Some of you think I, I did that on purpose. I didn't. That's just the way it came out. <laughs> so, I'm going to look this way. Uh, <laughs> we have to teach and counsel each other with all wisdom he gives. Man, some, you know, I, there's a lot of things I just don't know anything about. And I can be really guilty of it. I'm sure you can be really guilty of this too. Somebody asks you your opinion about something, you start acting and talking like you know what you're talking about and you really don't. And just, John and I have to say, we're just making stuff up. We're just making stuff up. Man, stop making stuff up. So we need to teach and counsel each other. And so this is a hat. I mean, it doesn't take very many times for me to be in a cold place without the right equipment, without the right clothing to realize, man, I need to have something. And I'll tell you what, that one works because you get hot quick wearing that hat. So we have to be amazing. We have to be aware. We have to be loved. We have to be ruled. We have to be teachable. This is my favorite one. Are y'all ready? I can't talk like a Jamaican, so I'm not even going to try. I start talking like a Jamaican, end up talking like an Irishman. All right. We need to be musical. And this is the best I could do for music. We need to be musical. So what do you mean we need to be musical? Well, we, look, look what he says. He says, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Now, this is every worship pastor's life verse. 
They love this verse. And, and contemporary guys are really thankful he just didn't end it after spiritual songs. You know, they, I mean, he threw in spiritual songs to cover the, you know, the, the new stuff. But sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God's, uh, to, to God with thankful hearts. There's that thankful heart again. We're supposed to be musical. And for some of us, we're very musical, and some of us have music on all the time, and for some of us, we're not. But here's what we know, and you can't argue with. Music, music impacts us. If you're driving down the road, and your favorite song comes on, you turn up the volume, and you go faster. It impacts us. Uh, music, my, my girls started this week, the, Christmas music, it's all over the house. They're just, they're playing Christmas music all over the house. Music impacts us. Studies are coming out, and, the, and now that more that we're able to study our brains, and they're doing all kinds of scans on our brains now, uh, while we're actually doing things to see what our brain is doing. And when music's being played, and the kind of music that you like, your brain literally lights up like a Jamaican hat. <laughs> it lights up. Because it's doing something to us. So it shouldn't be a surprise to us that we find in Scripture that we're supposed to sing songs. We're supposed to, we're supposed to have joy in our heart. We're supposed, it's supposed to be a part of who we are. And to sing about the things that matter. And occasionally it's okay to sing about stuff that doesn't matter. It's just okay to sing. And just sing a song that just kind of makes you feel good. Remember American Bandstand? You know, what was the common answer? It has a good beat and I can dance to it. Remember that? Remember that little portion of the American Advance? That's what every, you know, every 18-year-old said. Oh, it has a good beat and I can dance to it. That's why I like it. We have to be musical. So I have to be amazing, be aware, be loved, be ruled, be teachable, and be musical. And then the last one is this. It's to be consistent. To be consistent. And this is what the scripture says. This is how he ends this passage of scripture. And whatever you do or say. So this is Paul's way of, of, of thinking, you know what? I've covered a lot of stuff here. And I've given a lot of stuff for you to work on. But in case I forget something. In case there's something else that I didn't mention. In case there's something else that you're struggling with. In case there's some other circumstance you find yourself in. Whatever you do or say. That, that's the phrase like when you ever get a job description and they got all the list of all the job descriptions and then that last one or whatever duties are deemed necessary. You know, that's, the, that's that part. That's what Paul's doing here. Whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks. Have you noticed how many times that thankful heart has been in there? When we lose our thankful heart, we're in trouble. We're in a trouble when, we've, when we forget what we have to be thankful for. With a thankful heart, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So whatever I do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. And the reason that I wear this, out of all the hats that I ever have to wear, this is my favorite kind of hat. I love a knit hat. It makes, it's comfortable. I never get a headache wearing a knit hat. I usually, when I'm wearing this, it's because it's not super cold because we've already seen the super gold hat and that's uncomfortable and just miserable. This is just kind of the, you know, when it's 50 and it's, you know, for us, that's freezing, but, you know, it's just, it's just kind of comfortable and you can wear it. And so when I think of consistent and I think of steady, I think of a knit hat. It fits. It's comfortable. It's a part of who we are. Be different. Be different. Whether we're talking about the law of the Old Testament, the prophets of the Old Testament, the Gospels of the New Testament, or the letters of the New Testament. A common theme that runs in all of those books, all of those stories about God and his interaction with us is this thing, be different. Be different. And if we're amazing, and we're doing all those things that make up being amazing, and we're aware, and we're love, and we're teachable, and we're musical, and get this one, we're consistent, 
will be different. There's not a whole lot of that going on. Not a whole lot of that going on. Colossians chapter 3. I challenge you to read it. I challenge you to try to read it every day this week. It's a power chapter. It's filled with power verses. It, it, it starts off telling us our identity. This is who I am in Christ. And because of this, and because of who I am in Christ, there's some things I got to get rid of. There's some things I got to take off. There's some nasty, dirty stuff I got to get rid of. And then there's some things I got to put on. I got to put on some good stuff. My prayer for myself and my family and my prayer for you and your family is that it would be different. It would be different by getting rid of the stuff that we need to get rid of and by putting on the stuff we need to put on. Would you pray with me? Father God, we, we give you this time. And Father, I thank you for the fact that you let us read a letter that was written to a small group of people a long time ago. And Father, help us to take something away. Help us to, to take the one thing that we need this morning that's going to help us be different. Maybe it's just, maybe it's, we just need to be more gentle patient. Maybe we need a little bit more music in our life. Maybe we're just not very consistent. Maybe we just think we know it all, so we're just not able to be taught. Father, whatever it is in our own individual lives, in our own individual struggles at this point in time, Father, help us to take that one thing Help, help us to take that one thing. And so as your pastor, let me ask you to pray that right now. Would you pray that? Would you say, Father, would you re reveal to me the one thing that I need to work on this week? Father, may you continue to reveal that to us and may we do something about it. In your name we pray. Amen.